So let's draw the uh, electronic uh, configuration, ground state configuration for hydrogen and helium, and let's use this uh, orbital uh, diagram here. So for hydrogen, it's just one electron in the 1s, and for helium, it would be the two paired electrons with opposite spin in the 1s. And so we write that, normally people don't draw out these energy diagrams, but they know um, the energy levels, and they would just write 1s1 for hydrogen and 1s2 for helium. Um, let's do some more. Let's do the ground state electron configuration for lithium, beryllium, boron, and carbon. Lithium has three electrons. Beryllium has four electrons. Boron has five electrons. And carbon has six electrons. So I could use this energy level diagram to help me know the ordering um, going from lowest energy up to highest energy because our electrons are going to fill from lowest to highest. So if lithium has three, the first two electrons are going to fall into the lowest level, the 1s, and then the third will go into the 2s, so we write that 1s2, 2s1. Beryllium, we'd add one more electron there, so that'd be 1s2, 2s2. Boron, you add one more electron. The next higher is the 2p, the degenerate now um, orbitals between the 2s and the 2p. And we'd add one electron there. So that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Now when we get to carbon, we have to make a decision. It's got six electrons. Two would fall into the 1s, two into the 2s, and then uh, then we've got two in the 2p. Do, does it matter where you put them? Should I put them both in one orbital, or should I separate them out into two different orbitals? And as it turns out, I should separate them out into the two separate orbitals. When I write the notation, you can't tell the difference when I write it like this. It's still going to be 2s, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, written that way. But if I were asked to write it out in the more detailed, where I'm actually showing the m sub l um, orientations, then I would write it like this, 1s with two electrons in the 1s, 2s with two electrons in the 2s, 2p, knowing I have three possible orientations, um, one electron would um, fall out into the 2. And the reason why is because of Hund's rule, which states that if more than one subshell, and that's more than one uh, subshell, more than one uh, orientation here of the p is available, and electrons with parallel spins add electrons to parallel spins, excuse me, add electrons with parallel spins to the orbitals first before pairing up the electrons. So I have, um, and I shouldn't say more than one subshell here, I should say more than one orbital, that's a better way to describe it. If I have more than one orbital, and so the orbitals here, there's three 2p orbitals, they each have a different orientation, and the um, atom itself will be an overall lower energy level if I put parallel spins, and what that means is um, opposite spins is when you have like a spin up and a spin down or a plus and a minus, but they would all all be going spinning the same way, so let's just say these are both pluses for the sake of argument, um, and they would be in separate orbitals because within one orbital, because the Pauli exclusion principle, you can put two electrons, but they have to be of opposite spin. But it's if you have these um, degenerate levels within the p, three equal energy, it's better for them to uh, separate out with the uh, parallel spins. So that's the correct electron configuration. Again, if you write it like this, you can't quite tell the difference, but you need to know that, that the um, electrons have separated out into the separate p orbitals. So let's go on and do for n. We can just carry on. Um, it's going to n is nitrogen, and it has seven electrons. So it's going to Two are going to go in the 1s. Whoops. The next is the 2s. That will fill with 2. The next is the 2p. And there will be 3. And we need to know what it really looks like is 1s with the spin up and the spin down. 2s with the spin up and spin down. 2p with 3 parallel spins. Oxygen has 8 electrons. So it's going to be 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. And now when we get to the oxygen, we're going to have to start pairing up our uh, electrons in, in these orbitals. It's not because I have space. 
So now we'll have one pair of electrons and then the other two with parallel spins. Fluorine um, has atomic number nine, so it has nine electrons. So it'd be 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, knowing that that really looks like this. You need to be responsible for both notation because in different cases it's important to do it differently. So that's the fluorine. Whoops, and then neon 1s2, a noble gas, 2p6. Um, and neon is what we would consider, it's very stable. We know chemically it's very stable, it doesn't react with anything. And um, so what we say here when we have a total of eight electrons, um, in the, the outer shell, the valence shell, then we say that it has a um, satisfied or full octet. It's a very stable situation. We'll come back to that later. But that's our noble gas.